Okay, so we've just had a new version of Raspberry Pi OS, and this is based on Debian 11, uh, which is usually updated every couple of years. So this is a major upgrade. I just zoom into screen capture so I can show you a bit more. Now this is the 64-bit version, which is still in beta. Uh, the 32-bit version is the official version. And uh, I just booted this one up first because I wanted to have a play around with it, and then I was going to show the 32-bit version. And uh, playing around with things, I've managed to get rid of the Raspberry, which has got all the programs and everything on it. So, uh, yeah, I can't really show an awful lot on that. But if we look at Chromium, uh, which obviously comes installed, uh, you can see in the news, Bullseye, new version of Raspberry Pi OS. But I think what I'm going to do is boot up in 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS and show you how it all starts up. But before we do that, we'll have a quick look at YouTube playback. This is non-overclocked in a Pi 4 8 gig. And thanks to Bruno Serkov who told me about this version being out and also Luke Peters who's just mentioned it to me as well. So let's try a LPSP video HDR. And we'll go straight in at 1080 I think. So full screen. And so it's defaulted to 360. Let's go straight up to 1080 and see what happens. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Let's get stats for nerds on. So 17 dropped. You always get that bit where you're moving the mouse around at the start. It needs to settle down. Yeah, that's that's looking pretty good. There's not very many frames being dropped there. In a first test, as I say, this has only just been started up. It is still in beta, but YouTube playback is looking pretty decent. So let's start up Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit as I've messed up this one without the start bar. Uh, so let's close that down. And at least I can do Control alt delete and shut down. So that was running from my 128 gig Samsung bar. But I'm going to run this on this Brave Eagle SD card, which I've got in my speed test. It's a reasonable speed card and uh, actually pretty cheap as well. So let's switch that off and on again. Okay, so this is how it starts up. And the first thing you notice, uh, if you're used to using Raspberry Pi OS, is it doesn't come up with a black border. To install so you don't have to do the reader, disable overscan bit, which is great, uh, because I've always had to do that. Um, but if you have issues with your monitor and the taskbar, it comes up later in this menu. So if I hit next, I've got an ethernet cable in, so I don't need to do the Wi-Fi bit. Uh, you can see it's UK and British English and everything. Oh, what was that? Time zone Belfast though. And next, um, I'll leave it as it is. So here, look, they've changed the wording. So setup screen, the taskbar does not fit on the screen. Obviously you can see my taskbar fits on perfectly, so everything's fine. But if you were finding that this was partly off the screen, that's when you would click that little box. So a different way of doing it than before. So I'm gonna skip the network bit because I'm already all right with that because as you can see top right, I've got an ethernet connection. Nice to see a different wallpaper. Uh, so next to update the software. Didn't take very long at all on 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS, so I'll let it do all of that. And while it's doing that, you can see top left that I do have my menu as I should have. Uh, somehow I deleted it. I can't think how I did it. I was, um, I was messing about with right-clicking in this area, and uh, I couldn't find a way of getting it back simply, but I can just reinstall it as I've only just started off with an operating system. Okay, so system is up to date. Okay, and done. And I'm sure normally it would need a restart, but it's just gone straight into the OS, which is decent as well. So reading from the Raspberry Pi blog, uh, they're now using version three of GTK+, Plus, which should give buttons, menus, and various things a more consistent look and feel. And they talk about the appearance box, so if I call that up, desktop preferences. Yeah, so it does look nicer the way it's laid out, and there's more sort of variation in the shading as well so it doesn't look quite so one-dimensional there's a new window manager uh, which is called mutter and it talks about the way things are layered and shaded uh, looking better so it kind of defines the space better but it does say that it uses more ram uh, and so they recommend it on a pi with two gig or more um, but if you haven't got two gig or more then it will revert to the older open box window manager so you're not going to lose any performance on the lower spec pies and notifications are handled differently so let's plug in a usb stick see if i get a notification from plugging it in uh, well that looks the same but if i unplug it without ejecting it properly 
yeah there you go so this is the new uh, notifications window so the notifications are going to go away on their own but you can do it you can put it to zero so that the notifications stay on until you've clicked them but i quite like the fact that they go away on their own and it looks like it's probably going to be up here panel settings yeah so appearance yeah show notifications timeout seconds 15 so that's the default and it goes in fives so I'm going to play around with the taskbar because I prefer at the bottom. So the appearance of the taskbar seems to work differently because I'm trying to change this colour and I figure that I would click on solid colour with opacity, click on that and then you could pick a colour. Uh, so if I do a custom one, whatever I pick on here doesn't match. So say let's go random, let's go green uh, and then I can change the opacity and hit select. It shows it in here but it doesn't actually select it, so it doesn't doesn't appear down here. So let's go for, yeah, back to system theme uh, and do it in a different way. So if I click on here, preferences and appearance settings, I can't get exactly what I want, but I can get something similar to it. So if I go to taskbar, uh, so that's the current color. Will it do, yeah, it does. So it does the color, but the opacity doesn't show up. Let's go for something like that and select there you go and i also like to add the temperature to the bar so uh what is it panel applets add cpu temperature monitor and add and you can play around with this as well you can change some of the settings monitor settings so foreground color you can put more in with the theme but not something that's going to obscure the writing too much and background color we'll put something a bit lighter select and OK. So we look through the menus to see if anything's changed and been added in there. It definitely has a different look to it. Um, certainly some things definitely look nicer. Loads of stuff under programming. You can see here uh, under education, office, we've got LibreOffice, the full suite, Chromium web browser, VNC viewer, got VLC, image viewer, uh, some games in here, uh, soccer, I'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, accessories. I see there's no Raspberry Pi Imager in here, which is always a disappointment. Raspberry Pi Imager is a brilliant piece of software, and I can't understand why it's not pre-installed. We've got Diagnostics, which is for the speed test. We can copy SD cards in there as well, uh, obviously Terminal. Uh, so the bookshelf has had something new added. I think it was the custom PC one they mentioned uh, is now uh, in there and are free to download. And you can see there's other, the Magpie magazine. This is particularly useful um, if you just want to uh, download a PDF, you click on it and download it to the device. So let's go back in. And yeah, DBM reference, preferences. So add, remove software. Let's see if that's improved or yeah, pretty much looks the same, I think. So if I type in imager, because I would always install that. And if nothing's changed, we scroll down to the bottom and it appears at the top. Oh, there you go. It's exactly the same. So let's click on that and hit OK. Pop the password in, which if you haven't changed it, will be Raspberry. So now if I go down to the start bar, accessories, we've got Raspberry Pi Imager. This is how you would download this version. Uh, so you can see Choose OS. I've downloaded the bigger version. Uh, so if I go on Other. Uh, this is the version I've downloaded, the 3 gig version. The 64-bit version, because it's in beta, you have to download it separately. I'll put a link in the description uh, and then click on custom and, uh, and search for it on your device. I haven't got it on this particular build. So let's have a look in Raspberry Pi config, see if anything looks different. Okay, display, interfaces, performance. I see we've got the fan. I can't remember if that was in there before. So we've got enabled or disabled. We've also got where which GPIO pins the fan is connected to and also the fan temperature. So if you enable that, then obviously that all comes up. I'm using a, a passive system, so I haven't got a fan on this. Now I had a look in NeoFetch. So I've installed NeoFetch on here. It doesn't come installed or pre-installed. But if I launch it, I found something interesting. So Raspbian Linux 11 Bullseye, that's what we expected. Pi 4 Model B, all of that is fine. You can see the kernel update is there. The bit that I was interested in was here. The CPU says it's 1.8 gigahertz. Now, the CPU on a Pi 4 is 1.4 gigahertz, so I wonder if they've changed it uh, in the config.txt. I wouldn't have thought they'd overclock from standard unless they think that it can handle it 
with without any cooling. So let's have a look at the config.txt and see if there's anything about overclocking in here. Doesn't look like it. Everything's hashed out. Look at that. OTG mode equals one for the compute module four. That's interesting. Have to have a look at that on a compute module four. Arm boost equals one. Yeah, arm frequency equals 800. I don't know why it's it's reporting that, but NeoFetch is usually pretty accurate at lower clock speeds. That's definitely at higher clock speed. If you overclock at 2147, uh, it'll often show that it's running at 22. But if I go back into NeoFetch just to double check that, yeah, it's definitely saying it's running at 1.8 gigahertz. Weird. So from the official Raspberry Pi uh, blog about this operating system, there's an updater plugin, and it looks like it will tell you if updates are available. You can see there's an icon here that comes up. Updates are available. Click the update icon to install. So you don't have to go into terminal to update the system, which is really, really nice. And you can see here, it looks like it tells you what available updates are there, and you just hit install, and it'll install all automated. I saw this about the KMS video driver. So it's now more integrated into Linux. So we should see... Uh, better compatibility and better performance. Uh, there's also a new camera driver as well. Chromium is at version 92 now. And it's always good to go through the comments. Uh, so there was a comment about the 64-bit of uh, version of the operating system. Any news on 64-bit versions? And we've got an official answer here. Out of interest, why do you want a 64-bit version? 32-bit version allows individual applications to access up to the 4 gig limit. So you can run two applications each with access to 4 gig on an 8 gig Raspberry Pi 4. So there may be a few situations where a 64-bit version offers a small performance advantage, but it will be just that, a small advantage. I did tests on 64 versus 32, and I did find the 64-bit version definitely performed better. It wasn't a massive improvement, but it definitely was quicker. And certainly with uh, copying files and things like that, it, it, was, it was an improvement. In all our testing and benchmarking, 64-bit doesn't offer any significant speed advantage. When I was testing it, I was just kind of opening apps at the same time and, and copying things over and things like that. I wasn't doing benchmarks. So Jeff Gillings commented, uh, I've run the same Pi hardware, 64-bit tests are 5 to 15. See, I think that's a reasonable improvement. Um, but I know that the 32-bit is also there for the older Pis um, to maintain compatibility. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been using the 64-bit quite a lot, and I definitely do pref prefer it. But as my main operating system on Pi, I still use Twister OS, which is based on 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS. So another thing worth mentioning, uh, they've improved printer support. Um, now, printer support, I think, has been brilliant in this for a while. Uh, I've got an HP wireless printer, and it just connects and works and has worked for ages. But they've said that it's, uh, it needs less drivers, I think I read in one article. Um, but, uh, but yeah, better compatibility. As I say, I already found it great. Uh, it definitely is more reliable than my wife and daughter's Windows computers, which are always losing contact with the printer, even though my iPad always prints, and so does Linux. And I was just going to try one or two of these games. The soccer one took my interest. Um, it actually says, when you load it up, what does it say? It says, yeah, code the classic soccer game. So I think you probably, uh, if you go to the Raspberry Pi magazine, I'm sure there was an article on how you could code this yourself and make changes to it. So one player hit space to select, let's go for medium, and uh, I think space is shoot and uh, pass. Yeah, so it is a bit like Sensible Soccer, and uh, a nice little inclusion. Oh, oh it's not easy. So uh, let's have a look at one more of the games. I'm going to go for this Myriapod space. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can only go up a certain amount. Oh, I see, and you've got to shoot through the blocks. Oh, that's pretty decent. Yeah, it feels weird that you can drive up to a certain point, but not beyond. But yeah, that's pretty good. Another level. Okay, so I'm really impressed with this. Uh, I'm going to overclock it, obviously, and uh, play around with that. But uh, I wonder if anybody can answer why it says 1800 megahertz, because that's interesting to me. But uh, yeah, great to see this already great operating system being worked on. The performance is really, really good, uh, and I need to try this out on the Pi Zero. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.